In this short video, I'm going to go over three interesting massage industry trends happening in 2023 and then go over how they might affect your business. So really quickly, I'd like to introduce myself if you haven't seen my videos before. My name is Kurt Simpson and I own a 10 therapist massage clinic in Australia with my wife. I am interested in helping massage therapists. So in this video, I'm gonna go over three trends and I think they're interesting and I give my comment. Hopefully they can help steer some decisions for you this year. Number one is growing demand. Even through all the issues with COVID, how everyone was canceling massages and the industry had a bad year. In new reports, experts have said that the health and wellness industry is already a $52.5 billion industry in the US alone. And recent surveys are showing that heading into this year and throughout this year, that is continuing to grow, which is great news if you have a business and a massage business, which means there's more people out there than ever looking for massages. But it's if you're still struggling with massage, it's not going to mean there's going to be so much easier to get clients because there's going to be more big businesses expanding as well. So you're still going to have to compete with bigger clinics and salons and franchises. Why is the massage industry still increasing? Well, a lot of people are aware there's a bit of a wellness revolution kind of happening with certain parts of the population. And more and more consumers say that the pandemic has caused them to reevaluate priorities, placing health and wellness at the top of their self-care list. This is good news for the massage market as the massage market alone is $16.2 billion and it's looking at a 2.2% growth rate in 2021. This is despite economic deterioration. Like I said, this is potentially good news, but it doesn't just mean customers are gonna fall in your lap. You still have to work to get those customers because there's more competition than ever from the bigger chains. I just wanna take a second to ask you for a small favor. If you're finding this video helpful, if you could just tap the like button underneath it, I'd be really grateful. That will tell the YouTube algorithm to share this video with more massage therapists around the world. And hopefully that will help them all earn more income, which is what they deserve. Thanks for helping. Trend number two is being aware of changing demographics. And this was pretty interesting. I said, based on 2021 findings from the AMTA, more men are getting massages than women now for the first time ever. If you are strategizing your business plans and decisions for the year ahead, keep in mind that you may need to tweak your marketing to include this demographic shift of more men getting into massage and wanting massages now than women. And that will, trend will probably continue. So previously, massage was more popular amongst women, but now I think this could be caused by potentially more men in sports and activities and stuff like that. They get massages to help with that. I know I do. I work out whether it's maintenance, which I need to do more of, but usually when I have an injury, especially I do get a lot of massage um, and it helps me keep reminding me to get more massages as well. Also as massage becomes more mainstream, here's another important note about changing demographics in people getting massages was not just the fact about men getting more massages, but as massage is becoming more mainstream. This will also have another impact on your consumer base with the same AMTA survey showing that people making $100,000 a year or more, 36% of those people had a massage last year compared to only 19% of those making $50,000 a year or less. When you're looking to do your marketing and fit out your massage office or salon or spa or clinic, it's important I think as well, I already recognize this, and this is what we focus on in our clinic, was we go after the premium market, the higher end market, and we appeal to those people who have more money. This does mean having to invest in getting a, maybe a professional decorator or investing in uh, making your place look nicer, better signage from the outside, being in a nicer area if you can, on a nicer street, making your place look nice, getting nicer decorations, redoing, repainting the inside, anything like that helps. When we started out, we started out in a gym, in my gym for two rooms, but then we expanded into a seven room location. And while we're not in the best part of town because it's geographically 
center of our town. We did pay a professional designer to come in and make our place look beautiful because we'd never done that before. We'd kind of bootstrapped it, cut costs wherever we could, but we knew we wanted to go after the high end market. And that's really smart. I think the people with money will expect to go to a really nice place and they'll expect exceptional service and they'll expect outstanding results. You can't just advertise to people with money. You have to have the right branding online. You have to look professional. You have to look high quality. That's what people with money will go to. If you aim to be the best, you're going to attract and retain a higher value customer base, which that is showing that is the kind of people who get massages anyway. Aim for the high market and brand and decorate your business accordingly, deliver results and you should be on your way for that. The final trend I wanna talk about today is about increasing offerings. New data shows that consumers are actually getting more spa treatments now than prior to the pandemic. And I know you probably don't have a spa, but this what this shows is people are willing to get a lot of different types of services like facials and spa type treatments. You will already see this started many years ago with chains like Massage Envy and those kind of things. They switched to not just having massage, but adding facials and other similar treatments and stretch treatments and stuff like that. And it not only makes good business sense because as a massage therapist, you're not doing so many massages in a week. If you add in facials and stretching and stuff like that, it's more offerings for your customers who want those things as well. So you can cross sell different services. So that's what we do in our place. We do about half massages, half beauty treatments. Now we've gone down that path where our team doesn't have to do as many massages. They can do facials and they can do all those types of beauty and skin treatments as well. Something to think about if you're a sports therapist, obviously you probably wouldn't, wouldn't do facials, but there are other services that you can do. You can do complimentary sports massage stuff. You can do stretching, you can do cupping, you can do all of those sports massage related things. Um, even hot stones. Stretch is getting really popular as well. I know businesses just focus on stretch over massage because you could probably do more stretches in a week than massages. These are just things to think about increasing your offerings because people would prefer to go to a one-stop shop as long as you can help them and what you do deliver some results. So that's about it for this video today, guys. Uh, I will be doing massage trend update videos periodically throughout the year. Let me know if you actually like this kind of content if you like to hear news and trends and comments on it and uh, let me know what you think of that and if you got any value out of this give it a like check out my other videos on my channel for more value-based content as well all right i'll see you in the next video